Hi friends, this is Ricky Watt. I'm the pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to Midweek at Havenwoods. This is a time that we gather together each week to look into God's Word and ask Him to help us learn to be more like Jesus day by day. And tonight we're going to be talking about an aspect of the Christian life that I think is so critical and so important, not only in our own daily lives, but in our witness and testimony to others. And that's the topic of grace. And I've entitled this Bible study, uh, Living with Grace. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to take them and turn to Acts chapter 3. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 8 together in our time um, in this Bible study. But as you're finding Acts chapter 3, I, I just want us to think a little bit about grace. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Some people have defined grace as a merited favor with God. And, and the fact is, we all receive grace every day that we're living. It's grace that we have breath in our lungs and we are able to go about our day and, and live and do the things that we enjoy. That is a gift from God. Every day is a gift. It's a blessing of the Lord. And the question is, what do we do with that blessing? How do we use this gift that God has given us? And I think that's so important for us to uh, think about as we go through our daily lives, is how do we honor God with the gift of his grace. It's great to receive grace, but are we extending grace to others? Here's a question I thought about just this week related to that. Are we as quick to extend grace to others as we are to receive grace from God? I think if most of us were really honest, we would say that we probably are much quicker to receive grace than we are to extend that grace to others. And so in Acts chapter 3, we are given a story about two of the disciples and how grace impacted their lives. And as a result of the grace that they had received from God, how they uh, exemplified that in the life of someone else. So let's just read together Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, and then we're going to share a couple of points about this passage together. The Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and giving his eyes, uh, fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, what an encounter for this man. And there's four points that I want us to see in our time together about living in grace and the effect that that only, not only has on us, but on the lives of others. Number one, I want you to see, grace sees others with the eyes of Jesus. Grace helps us to see others 
with the eyes of Jesus. Again, look back there in verses 2 through 4. It, it says that these men, these disciples, were going into the temple to pray. And it says that this man who was crippled, it says that he was, um, that he was lame from birth, that his family would pick him up every day and take him and lay him by the gate where he would enter into the temple and he was a beggar. He would ask for people to give to him. And there's a couple of things that I think are so important for us to see about that. Number one is that there were people in his life, his family, that saw him as a helpless person. And so therefore, every day they would pick him up, they would take him down to the gate, going into the temple, and they would leave him there. But number two is that that meant that every day as people came into the temple, that they would have to pass this guy. And, and there may have been somebody that would stop and and put a, a, a piece of uh, change in his uh, bucket or, or in his bag, whatever he had to collect that in. But Peter and John saw him different. Peter and John did not see him as a helpless cripple. Peter and John see him, saw him through the eyes of Jesus. And friend, this is something that is so important to you and I in our daily lives that we don't fall into the trap of looking at others the way that everybody else does. Because we are saved, because we are born again, the Bible says that we are a new creation in Christ, that we don't have the luxury of just looking at people the way everyone else does or responding to people the way everyone else does. No, God expects us to see them through the, the prism of his grace. And as a result of that, it ought to change the way that we look at other people. No doubt, as you're watching this video right now, you have family members, you have friends, you have coworkers, you have people in your circle of influence who are hurting, who are struggling, who are going through great difficulties in their lives. And friend, you and I have the choice. Will we look at them through the eyes of Jesus? Or we, will we just look at them through the eyes of our flesh like everyone else does? See, we don't like seeing people through the eyes of Jesus because we know when we see them through the eyes of Jesus that then we are obligated to do something, to get involved. And that's exactly what Peter and John did here, that, that they, they stopped and they, they talked to this man. They ministered to him. They met the need not only physically, but of his heart as well. And I'm telling you, I believe that we need to be sensitive as Christians to ask God, God, give me the eyes of Jesus, the eyes of grace, to be able to know that I have received so much from God and God in turn wants to meet to use me and he wants to use you as instruments of his grace to minister to others who are struggling. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9, uh, I think this is a great passage that reminds us of the grace that we need to live with each day. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, I think it's real easy when we see someone struggling, when we see someone hurting, to just want to pass by 
and, and ignore them. And that's the default setting of our heart and our mind and even our eyes. But friend, when you are a Christian, when you love Jesus, when you have been uh, bought with the blood of Jesus and you are a new creation in Christ, we don't have the luxury of just acting and responding the way the world does. God has not only saved us, but he has left us here to make an impact. And one of those ways that he uses us to make an impact is that we see people. We see circumstances and situations in a different way. And as a result, God uses the grace that he has placed within us to minister to those around us. Let me just ask you, as you go through your daily life, are you asking God to give you the eyes of Jesus, to see the needs, the, the troubles, the struggles of others, and help us to respond in a way that would honor God in our life? Number two, I want you to see, not only uh, does grace see others with the eyes of Jesus, but number two, Grace sees the possibilities instead of the problems. Grace sees the possibilities instead of the problems. Another way to put it is grace sees the opportunities instead of the obstacles in our lives. And again, you may be one that when you come in contact with people or circumstances in your life, you immediately Think about the problems. But see, God doesn't want us to dwell on the problems. He wants us to dwell on the possibility of what God can do in that situation. Again, here in verse 6 of Acts chapter 3, it says, When Peter and John come up and they encounter this man laying by the gate, heading into the temple to pray, it says, Then Peter said to him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now see, no one else that was passing by this guy on a regular basis even had the thought of, of maybe this guy could walk again. All they're thinking about is, should I give him money? Should I, should I just walk by and say nothing? Should I not even acknowledge him? Should I just ignore him? And, and again, Peter and John, they, they say to him, hey, we don't have money to give you. We have something far greater than money. We have the grace of God that has been extended to us. I mean, just think about Peter. And how God had worked in his life. He called him as a disciple over and over. And this is why I love Peter. Peter just did knucklehead stuff, you know. He walks out on the water. He gets his eyes off Jesus. He starts to sink down. And Jesus could have just let him drown right there. But instead, Jesus extended grace to Peter. I think about the time that uh, Jesus said to Peter, you know, um, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter's like, oh no, I, I would never do that. And the next thing you know, Peter's denied Jesus three times. And again, Jesus could have just let Peter go his way in his despair and depression. But instead, he gave Peter the opportunity to preach on the day of Pentecost. What an what a incredible act of the grace of God. Even as the uh, soldiers are coming to take Jesus away uh, to, be, uh, to face Pontius Pilate, uh, Peter grabs a sword and cuts the ear off of one of the soldiers. And Jesus reaches down and heals the ear of that soldier. Peter received the grace of God. And, and as a result, 
Peter didn't look at this man laying by the gate and, and say, well, he's just hopeless and helpless. No, he saw that as an opportunity. He, he saw that as what's the possibility of what God could do in this situation. And can I tell you, God wants to do the same thing in your life. Quit looking at the problems and start looking at the poss possibilities. Stop looking at the obstacles and start looking at the opportunities of what God can do in your life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, Paul was faced with a, a, a difficult situation in his life. He refers to it as him having a thorn in the flesh. And the Bible says that uh, Paul called out on three occasions and asked God to remove this thorn from him. And in uh 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, we see the response of God to Paul. It says, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, rather than, than Paul just focusing on the negative and the problem, he said, you know what? It may be that God has allowed this in my life to grow me, to mature me, to strengthen me, to build me up. And he even says there that God says, my strength is made perfect, mature, complete, and our weaknesses. Friend, are you going through a struggle right now? Have you been so busy just cursing that struggle that you haven't looked at maybe what is God trying to teach you during this time? What's God trying to develop in your heart and life through this that you may not be able to, to get any other way than just going through this storm? Again, remember, God's grace is sufficient. He'll give you grace for each day. Again, undeserved gift he's given you each day to help you through your struggle. Number three, I want you to see that grace offers a hand up, not a hand out. If we're real honest, some of us, we're much quicker to, to want to just offer a hand out then we are to offer a hand up. Because see, when we offer a hand up, that, that requires us getting involved in the situation. And you see here in verse 7 of Acts 3 that it says, And he took him, took the man by the right hand, and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Listen, is there somebody in your life that God may be calling you to go to them, minister to them, love on them, invest in them? Uh, it may be on a physical level. It may be on a spiritual level, level. It may be on an emotional level. It may even be in a financial way that God is speaking to your heart and saying, hey, why don't you give them a hand up? Get, lift them up in the midst of their storm and their trial. I know folks right here at our, in our church family that on a regular basis, they go out and take meals to people who are hurting. Uh, they, they minister to people in ways that no one ever knows, but God knows. And friend, when you offer a hand up, to someone in your life. God knows. And God sees that as an extension of his grace through your life to hurting people. Um, in Psalm 40 and verse 2, the Bible mentions it this way. He says, He also, speaking of God, brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay 
and set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. Again, why do we lift others up? Because God has lifted us up. I love that phrase he uses there. He lifted me up out of a, a pit, out of the miry clay, that old sticky, um, a nasty clay that's not easy to get out of. You're not going to just fall down in that and just roll right out. No, it's going to be tough and difficult. But you know what? God can lift us up. And if God so loves us that he will lift us up, I believe that he wants us to love in the same way that we would be willing to lift others. And then fourth and finally, I want you to see as we think about living with grace, number four is God uses grace and faith to change people. Uh, we are quick to gripe and complain because people don't act the way that we think they should. Maybe they don't respond the way that we think they should. Maybe they don't make the choices that we think they should. But friend, can I tell you, a little grace goes a long way. Just to be willing to cut people some slack. Um, I just recently shared a message here at Havenwoods about that. And I said, sadly, many times, the ones that we claim we love the most are the ones that we are so quick not to cut them any slack. You know, we'll do it for a coworker, we'll do it for a friend, but will we do it for our family? What Will we allow God's grace that we have so freely received Will we be willing to extend that? Because, listen, you may want somebody to change, but the greatest instrument that God has to change people is his grace. When we do blow it, when we do mess up, when we do fail, and we realize that God still loves us anyway, that God is faithful. His word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. And listen, God uses grace and faith to change people. And listen, I believe, I want my church to believe that God can change anybody. God can change anything. He's a big God. He's an awesome God. And many times, God is limited by what he can do because we choose to limit him. Rather than giving him the freedom, say, God, please change this situation. God, please change this person. And, and he changes us by grace and faith. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, the Bible speaks about the greatest change that God can make in a person. He says there, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The friend, the greatest change that you and I or anyone will ever experience is the change of salvation. When we call on Jesus, he moves us from darkness to light. He moves us from death into life. And friend, if he can do that by his grace, his undeserved gift to you, and by the activation of my faith, trust in Jesus as my Savior, and, and moving me from having eternity in hell to having eternity in heaven, friend, I would just say there's nothing too big for our God. There's nobody that's too far that God can't reach them. So keep praying, keep loving, keep serving, and allow God to use you as an instrument of his grace. Now, you may be watching this right now, and you may say, well, you know what? I've done so many things in my life. I'm so, so far away from God. You know, surely God can't change me. Oh, yes, friend, he can change you. 
And I just want you to know, if you're watching this right now and you have never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, the Bible says that all you need to do is believe in your heart that Jesus loves you. Believe in your heart that Jesus came to this earth and he lived a sinless life. He died on the cross for you and for me. He rose again on the third day to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And friend, if you would just confess your sins to God right now. And again, my sin is just my disobedience to God. If you would confess that to God and ask him to come into your heart and life and be your Savior and Lord, friend, he will do that right now. Would you like to do that right now? If you would, I'm just going to ask you just to bow your head with me. And I'm going to lead you in what we call a sinner's prayer. A prayer of salvation for you to call on Jesus. And again, it's not about you just saying the words that I say. But it's about you coming to God with a surrendered heart. And allowing him to save you. So let's just bow our heads and call on Jesus right now. Just repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And right now, Jesus, I confess my sin to you. And I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of my sin. Please come into my heart and life and save me. Change me from the inside out. I receive your grace right now. And I want to walk in your grace. And I want to share your grace with others. Thank you, Jesus, for living for me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for rising again from the grave for me. And I confess you now as my Savior and my Lord. And I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And friend, if you just prayed that prayer, you've just made the most important decision of your life by trusting Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. And you need to tell somebody. You need to let someone know, hey, I gave my life to Jesus and now I want to follow him. It's not, this is just the beginning of a relationship between you and God. And uh, you need to find a good church home. I, I would recommend Havenwoods Baptist Church to you. But maybe you're, you don't live in this community uh, or maybe for whatever uh, other reasons you can't come and attend here. I want to challenge you, get in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church and, and, and begin to grow. And uh, I would also ask you, if, if you did pray that prayer, just to send me a quick email to rickywatt at gmail.com and I'll give you some tips on how to grow in your relationship with Jesus. But you may be watching this video right now and you've really been challenged. You've really been confronted by the Holy Spirit with the fact that maybe we're not living uh, great, God's grace like we should. We, we've been judgmental. We've been negative. We've been critical towards others who have fallen and who have messed up and who have sinned. And maybe through this Bible study, God has given you a fresh burden in your heart to be more graceful. Uh, again, to be as quick to extend grace as you have been to receive God's grace. So friend, I want to just pray for us as we close this Bible study time out and just ask God to help us grow in grace so we can extend grace and show grace and the lives of people all around us who desperately need a touch from God. And, and grace may be the vehicle that God uses in our lives to reach them for Christ, to restore them in Jesus, 
to show them that there's hope, that our failures are not final in our life. And so I just want to pray with you right now. Father, I pray, beginning with me, and Lord, praying for my brothers and sisters who are watching this right now, that God, you would help us to grow in the grace and mercy of Jesus. God, that we would see others through the eyes of Jesus. God, that we would allow you to, to change our eyesight so that we would see others the way that you do. God, we also pray that you would help us to see the possibilities in others rather than just the problems. But God, we might be able to see them the way that you do, just like when you saw us, that God, you didn't see us as just dirty, filthy sinners. You saw what we could be as a result of your grace. God, help us to see others in that same way. And God, I pray that you would help us to offer a hand up to those who are hurting and not just a hand out. A hand up means that there's going to be an eternal difference made in their lives, not just a, a temporary fix. And then, God, lastly, that we would understand that your grace and faith can change anybody. Lord, I'm praying right now for people who are watching this video. They may have a spouse. They may have a child. They may have a parent. They may have a sibling or a grandchild who's not walking with you, who's not living for you. And God, I pray we would not give up hope, but God, we would keep praying for them. We would keep loving them. We would keep serving them so that they could see the grace and mercy and love of Jesus in a practical way lived out before them. God, we thank you tonight for grace. We thank you that you give it to us every day, an undeserved gift that you show us every day. And God, we pray that you would help us to be instruments of your grace that you could use to make a difference in the lives of others. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for this opportunity to study your word and pray together today. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So friend, I want to thank you again for joining us for this time of Bible study. As always, if you have a prayer need, if there's any way we can minister to you, please feel free to send me uh, an email at rickywatt at gmail.com. And I promise you, we will pray for you. We'll try to help you in any way we can. And if you watch this video and it's been a blessing to you, please share it with your family and friends. Share it on social media so other people can benefit from the ministry of the Word of God. But until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. And remember, God loves you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you.